our knowledge of how memory B cells can suppress the activation of naive B cells uh, allows for a, an interesting clinical intervention that can prevent hemolytic anemia of newborns. So this is a very dangerous condition which can, which can result in the death of a newborn infant. And it turns out our knowledge of how memory B cells and naive B cells interact um, can actually prevent this. So let's talk about he the condition hemolytic anemia of newborns and how this is prevented by an immunological uh, intervention. So hemolytic anemia of newborns starts with this um, protein on the surface of red blood cells called the Rh factor or the rhesus factor. So Rh factor is um, a protein found on the surface of some people's red blood cells, assuming that they are Rh positive. So genetically, some people inherit the genes to produce the Rh protein. Those people are called Rh positive. Some people uh, don't express the protein. They are Rh negative. So a person's red blood cells can either be positive or negative for the uh, Rh factor. Now, um, if a mother is Rh negative, so that's her red blood cells, you can see there, that doesn't have the rhesus factor on it, but the fetus is Rh positive, then this could lead to the mother uh, making antibodies against the Rh protein, which you can see will eventually lead to damaging the, uh, a fetus's red blood cells. Now, how is the fetus going to get uh, uh, Rh positive? Well, if the father is Rh positive, then there's a chance that the fetus will be Rh positive as well. Now, if the mom and the fetus were both Rh positive, that wouldn't be a problem. If the mom and the fetus were both Rh negative, that wouldn't be a problem either. The issue comes when the mom is Rh negative and the father may be Rh positive. So in that case, there's going to be an intervention that's going to need to take place, and we'll see why right now. So let's say we have an Rh negative mother and an Rh positive father, and the fetus has inherited the Rh factor. What's going to happen is that some of the Rh protein ends up in the mother's bloodstream. Now, does blood, is blood supposed to cross the placenta from the infant to the uh, um, mother? Not usually, but uh, during growth and development of the embryo and the fetus, blood vessels are breaking, and blood is mixing a little bit between the fetus and the mother. So some of the fetus's blood will eventually get into the mother's blood supply. If the Rh factor gets into the mother's blood supply, well, her, her immune cells have never seen Rh factor. So she most likely never screened out uh, uh, immunoglobulins to uh, tolerate Rh factor. So she's not self-tolerant against Rh factor. So it is likely that one of her naive B cells will have rearranged their VDJ regions so that they bind the Rh protein. If this is the case, then a naive B cell will activate uh, and produce antibodies against the Rh protein. Now, usually during the first pregnancy, there's not a whole lot of uh, stimulation probably because this isn't a pathogen really. Um, so it's possible that uh, the, the antibody response is not a very strong response during the first pregnancy. And so she ends up producing low amounts of IgM during the first pregnancy with an Rh positive fetus. And IgM is not gonna cross the placenta. It's not the type of antibody that can be transported into the fetus's blood supply. So the Rh factor, the anti, uh, I, the IgM molecules that attack the Rh factor aren't really gonna have much of an effect on the fetus. They will maybe attack the protein that's in the mother's blood supply, but they're not going to do much to the fetus. But what's going to end up happening in the mother is that she will make memory B cells that could isotype switch to make IgG. So this is occurring do, during a woman's first pregnancy, uh, an Rh negative woman, first pregnancy with an Rh positive uh, fetus. Uh, so during the pregnancy or even during childbirth, she's going to get exposed to the fetus's blood, and she's going to make antibodies that recognize the Rh protein. Those antibodies might eventually switch to become IgG and high affinity. This is during the first pregnancy, but the, the attack on the fetus's blood doesn't happen during the first pregnancy. When it happens is during the second pregnancy. So if this same woman is... Uh, pregnant again with another fetus, and the fetus is Rh positive, now the woman has memory B cells from her previous pregnancy that recognize the Rh protein, and they're isotype-switched antibodies. 
So again, uh, some Rh factor might leak into the mother's blood supply. And now her memory B cells recognize it, they activate, and they start secreting IgG that will bind the Rh protein. Now, if you recall, IgG can be transported across the placenta using these, uh, the FC receptor protein, FCRN. So IgG uh, that will bind the RH protein gets transported into the fetus's blood supply. So this is the second pregnancy. Now uh, there are antibodies that will bind the RH protein on the fetus's red blood cells. And what happens when antibodies IgG recognizes an antigen? Well, that can do a number of things. One thing is it can cause macrophages with their um, FC receptors that bind IgG to bind this complex and engulf phagocytose opsonization, the red blood cells. So now the fetus's macrophages are phagocytosing the fetus's red blood cells. And so when the infant is born, it is very anemic. It has very little of its own red blood cells. So, and we call this hemolytic anemia um, because the macrophages lice the red blood cells. They eat the red blood cells. So the uh, fetus, very anemic. It can't transport a lot of blood uh, oxygen in its bloodstream because it is very low on red blood cells. Why? It's because of the mother's IgG that recognizes the Rh protein. So this, again, only occurs when the, the, during the second pregnancy when the mother is Rh negative and the fetus is Rh positive. So this is bad, right? So, but it turns out we can prevent this. And it's using a, um, a drug, which is an antibody. And it exploits what we learned in the last video about how memory cells can, be, can suppress naive cells. All right, so if a woman is Rh negative, the, it is uh, very likely that she will be given a compound called Rogam. So all Rh negative, pregnant women are injected with Rogam, which is this molecule that will stop the mother from making her own anti-RH antibodies. Uh, even if the father is RH negative, they don't really care about the father because uh, they don't really know who the father is, even though the, I'm sure the mother will tell them who the father is. Uh, to be safe, any RH negative pregnant woman is injected with Rogam so that she does not make uh, RH uh, antibodies. So what is this drug, Rogam? The drug is an antibody that binds RH. It's an IgG that recognizes RH. Now, that's really strange because that's the exact same thing that damaged the red blood cells in the first place. Why are we injecting it in the mother in the first place? Um, so we'll see right now. So this is during the first pregnancy. And we said in the first pregnancy, some RH protein leaks across the um, placenta, gets into the mother's blood supply. So this was back in, if we go back into our first pregnancy. And we talked about naive B cells, right? As odds are, a naive B cell is going to have, one of her naive B cells is going to have an antigen binding site that binds the RH factor, right? She's RH negative, so she doesn't screen out any anti-RH uh, immunoglobulin. So here we go. Naive B cell says, oh yeah, I, I recognize this protein. My, my VDJ is recombined and I got a variable region finds this thing. So I'm going to, right, well, I'm going to do what I normally do. I'm going to activate and start making antibodies. But uh, here comes the drug, right? The drug is an anti-RH IgG. That also binds the RH factor protein on the surface of the fetus or blood cells. And remember from the last video, we learned about this inhibitory receptor, the FC gamma R2B1 inhibitory receptor, which is found on the surface of naive B cells. So if that engages um, a ligand, then it will send a negative or inhibitory signal into that B cell and say, don't activate. So by injecting an anti-RH IgG into the mother during her pregnancy, she will suppress her naive B cells that would attack RH factor. Right? So this is taking advantage of the knowledge of how these inhibitory receptors work. So in this, in, 
for in this treatment, she will not make antibodies that will recognize Rh because we are suppressing them with the Rogam. How did the Rogam suppress it? The Rogam uh, is an anti-RH IgG which engages the FC gamma R2B1 inhibitory receptor on the surface of naive B cells and they will not activate. And that's great. You know, some of you might have a question, well, won't that antibody that we inject into the mother, won't it go across the blood supply because it's an IgG and attack the um, fetus's blood? And the answer is, if in high amounts it would, but there is um, such low amount injected into the mother that it is not enough to cause extensive damage to the fetus's blood supply. So that is hemolytic anemia of the newborn and how we can prevent hemolytic disease of the newborn by intervening with an antibody that binds the Rh factor. If you found this confusing, it's covered in your book. Uh, uh, the, another explanation presented in your book, exactly what I just told you here, um, but it's a really neat intervention that can be used to save thousands of lives of uh, newborns.